Hey guys, this is Nate and this is the Nader Tater channel. Today we're going to talk about smart home and specifically the different types of protocols that your devices can communicate with. So the three main ones are Zigbee, Z-Wave, and Wi-Fi. And you can basically get most devices in any flavor of those and they have their pros and cons and drawbacks. There is not one clear winner, I would say depending on what you need to do. So let's go through what those pros and cons are, figure out what maybe matters to you the most and help you decide which one to get if you're trying to get into the smart home uh, environment. So um, these devices here, these are all uh, smart plugs. So they just plug into an outlet and then they will allow you to turn it on and off with your phone or your hub or automation. And most of them, I think all of them really have a button as well that you can power them on or off um, physically with your finger. So this one is a Zigbee one. This one is a Z-Wave one. This one has two outlets and obviously a little bit different form factor. And then this one is a Wi-Fi one. And the Wi-Fi one and Zigbee one look identical and it's, they're from the same brand, but they are different. So. Let's start with uh, power consumption. So among these three, Zigbee is the lowest power consumption and Z-Wave comes in a close second. They've uh, used to be worse um, power consumption. They've gotten better over time with their Z-Wave Plus. It's actually very similar to Zigbee. And then Wi-Fi is the worst of them. And on these outlet or these plugs, it doesn't really matter. But on a battery powered, uh, sensor or device it does matter so you will get better battery life on a Zigbee than a Wi-Fi for example and like I said Z-Wave is um, the older stuff's kind of in the middle but the newer stuff really is pretty close to to Zigbee so something to consider if you're getting something that's battery powered to kind of steer away from Wi-Fi now uh, the next thing you, if you haven't paid attention to the chart back here is cost so Z-Wave is not a open um, source protocol. So that means that it's closed, which means a company owns the rights to it and they basically license it out to people when they put it on their device. So the companies have to pay to be able to use uh, Z-Wave. So that means they have to pass some of that cost on to you, the consumer. Zigbee is open, which means anyone can access it, use that protocol, and um, that makes it very universal. But the problem with that is it was actually a little bit too open early on, and it meant that some of the Zigbee devices did not um, interoperate together very well, or at all. And it's because the standards weren't all well-defined. One example of that is the Philips Hue lighting system. So even though they're Zigbee based, Philips really kind of altered it and made it so that you had to use a Philips Hue hub in order to work with those lights uh, effectively. So, you know, in, in that way, that, that was bad, but they've, they've been fixing that. And so now the new Zigbee, I think it's like 3.0 or something standard is more universal, has better defined rules for how devices should work with each other. And then lastly here is, is Wi-Fi. And for that one, obviously it's open as well. Uh, Wi-Fi is very popular and it's out there. Um, so everyone's familiar with that. Next down on my list is, is a hub required. So for me, I have uh, close to 100 smart devices in my smart home. So that's everything from outlets to little plugs to lights to um, you know the light switches uh, and then doors smart locks uh, power monitors water leak sensors that kind of stuff and to get those all together I use a hub so I use a smart things hub there are other hubs I won't get into all of those but the fact is that both Zigbee and Z-Wave require some type of hub device now on my chart I have Zigbee as a kind of and the reason I put that is 
Alexa actually is putting in Zigbee radios in their newer Echo devices. So um, the new, like the second gen ones and the um, Show Plus and what whatnot, they have a capability of actually being the um, Zigbee hub uh, built into it. So they they both do need some sort of device that is listening and can interact with them whereas the Wi-Fi does not so you can take your existing home if you have just Wi-Fi in your house you can add a Wi-Fi plug to it you don't need any more hub to it the downside to that is in order for it to work you have to then download some kind of app or software that will make it work uh, to know how to connect to it and so most common on all of them is a uh, smartphone app and you would download that you would go through some kind of procedure to set it up and it would uh, connect to your device and have it connect to your home internet and then it would use the cloud system um, through the internet to communicate so you'd have it on your phone and you hit turn on for this plug it would then communicate back to you know this one is sewn off brand they would have some kind of server running and when you hit that on your app it would then send it and tell it to turn it on and that's all fine and dandy except for if that cloud system goes down or doesn't work anymore now your smart device is pretty dumb so that's the uh, big downside to Wi-Fi is that it's going to be tied to always going through a cloud-based system I don't think there's ever a way that the Wi-Fi one right now that I'm aware of can be locally executed whereas both Zig Zigbee and Z-Wave uh, if their hub supports it they can be locally executed which means it goes straight from your phone to the hub or if it's a automation you know the hubs all internally it picks up a sensor movement and then inside the hub it says I'm gonna turn this light on and it does that all without going through the internet so that's the big advantage of having a hub and therefore Z-Wave and Zigbee. Now that said, the Wi-Fi one can work with hubs. Uh, so for example, for me, for smart things, I have these plugs and now what I'm doing is I'm connecting the plugs cloud service to my hubs cloud service. So now, I'm, now I get two clouds uh, interacting with each other so uh, more opportunity for failure and um, also can slow down the response time additionally uh, on that same effect with the wife and with with these as well you can connect them to Google and Alexa so I can also uh, connect these devices for me it's through my smart things hub it will connect to, to Google and then Google can um, basically interact with and automate any of my devices as well so that's um, it for the the Wi-Fi okay so now next we'll talk about the range so Z-Wave has the best range and in general if you know anything about frequencies the lower frequencies are able to penetrate um, objects better so buildings and trees and that kind of stuff and this one at 900 megahertz it does travel further and does better at not having interference because it's not in that Wi-Fi 2.4 gigahertz spectrum so Z-Wave is kind of the the king of the range and then they do um, do their own mesh network with their devices so when you plug in in any Z-Wave device that's plugged in it acts as a repeater so if you plug that in and you put another object further down that further device z-wave device will connect to this one and then it will hop back and connect to the hub so it can do uh, up to four hops to get back to the hub z-wave is similar in that it can do the same mesh setup and it can do um, the hopping they actually don't have a limit i don't think of how many hops they can do but um, in general their range is lower than z-wave and then lastly Wi-Fi uh, everyone knows kind of Wi-Fi and uh, you probably know in your house how far away you can go and still have Wi-Fi signal and that's what this 
um, device would be tied to. Obviously, if uh, your phone or something doesn't get signal, this probably won't either, and it will fall off. And the downside of these is they don't repeat. So when you plug in this device, it doesn't then extend your network even further like the other two do. So this one has the worst range out there. But there is a caveat and there's a reason why I have this Wi-Fi device. And that is because I have a fairly complicated Wi-Fi mesh system that goes throughout my property here and covers about four acres. I have videos on that. But on my back barn, it is too far from the hub here to get Z-Wave or Zigbee back there without some inordinate steps to try to make it happen. So since I already have Wi-Fi back there, because I've already taken all those steps to get Wi-Fi to the back building, it's very easy for me to plug in this to the back building and then I have uh, a smart home device that then I then tie back into my smart things and from that standpoint on smart things it acts as any of my other devices so that's an example where for me the Wi-Fi actually won out uh, against the other two okay and then the last one I have is cloud-based we kind of touched on that already where these two Zigbee and Z-Wave are not cloud-based but the Wi-Fi one has to be I don't think there is um, one out there that is not cloud-based now theoretically it would not have to be you know you you could have a way that you could communicate locally with a wi-fi device just like you do to your computer or some other tablet but i don't think they they have that out right now so in the end for me the two main ones are Z-Wave and Zigbee if you're going to be serious about a smart home. If you're going to have lots of devices, um, then you want one of these two because they help make your network stronger the more you have. And then they are faster to operate. You have to buy a hub of some sort, but by doing so, you allow local execution and you have more control over your smart home itself. Now, between these two, I don't think you can really go wrong with either one. I would say for me, I favor Z-Wave, and namely it's because it has that different uh, frequency that it runs off of that allows it to not be interfering or have a chance of interfering with Wi-Fi devices. For me, I'm out here in the country. I have no neighbors, but I have a lot of Wi-Fi. I have like 60 Wi-Fi devices or something. so. I have enough activity going on in that um, uh, frequency bandwidth that I prefer Z-Wave to it, but you can certainly pick either one and I think they work fine. The Wi-Fi one is really the one that I kind of, in general, do not recommend to people, especially if they're going to have a lot of them. So if you want to get your feet wet and get into a smart home and like, what would I do with a smart plug? or what will I do with a smart sensor? Then Wi-Fi is not a bad thing to start with. And it will get you in the mindset of how to do that at a very low cost. Like, I forget what this guy was. I think it was 10 bucks or something. So for that price, you could test it out, see if you like it. And then if you want to really expand and grow and get serious, I would encourage you to get a hub and uh, Z-Wave and Zigbee devices. So. Um, that's all I have on this, but if you have questions, put them down below in the comments. And then obviously, if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon. That way you'll see some more stuff. I will be open and honest here. I do not just cover technology stuff. So if that's what you want, my channel is not for you. But I cover outdoor stuff. I do cover smart home, Wi-Fi. I cover lighting tools, uh, Bobcat Toolcat plow my driveway you name it I do all kinds of stuff out there so um, stay tuned if you like a range of different topics and uh, I hope to uh, see you guys back